that it's me? Yes, no, it's an imposter. No, really, I'm Mr. Wara. Yes, I am, my friends. Hey, welcome to another math lesson. It's problem solving, my two favorite words. Yes, in math, it's problem solving. Lesson 9.6. And, very nice, look at the topic, of course, is problem solving because we are reaching the end of this chapter. We're looking at find a rule. Now, what's our essential question, our learning target? As I like to refer to it, it is, how can you use the strategy, solve a simpler problem to help you solve a problem with patterns? Ooh, I mean, how can you do it? Solve a simpler problem? I like that strategy. All right, let's go on to unlock the problem. That's right, my friends. It's real world, baby. Real world. Real world. It states, on an archaeological dig, Gabriel separates his dig site into sections with areas of 15 square feet each. There are three archaeological members digging in every section. What is the area of the dig site if 21 members are digging at one time? Woo, great question. Yes, I like it. Okay, well, let's go ahead and follow the steps. Mr. Wara, remember, follow the steps. Yes, I will, I will, I promise. Okay, first it says, read the problem. Okay. What do I need to find? Okay, or I need to find the, okay, basically, yes. Uh, the question, it's right there in the question. The question stated that what is the area of the dig site if 21 members are digging at one time? So the area then would be of Gabriel's archaeological dig site. Cool. Now, what information do I need to use? All right, it says I can use the area of each section, which is, and the dig site each section was, I recall, 15 square feet. That's just an abbreviation for 15 square feet. Now, it says there are so many members in each section. I remember there's three members in each section. Again, this is in the problem above, and that there are 21 members digging. Cool. I like this little scaffold. It's kind of helping us along to make sure that we understand the problem well. We're really unpacking the problem by reading the problem. That's really a key point as you solve a math problem. How will I use the information? Well, I will use the information to search for patterns to solve A. And remember what this essential question was all about. It was about a simpler problem. Cool, yeah, it's time to move down to solve the problem. But not before I say, that's right. Woohoo! yeah, yeah. Okay, sorry, I just needed to do that. Now to solve the problem. Cool, there's a table. Mm, they're giving me all kinds of hints, looks like in the blue. I like it. Okay, so first thing says possible rules. It says multiply the number of sections by blank to find the number of members. Okay, multiply the number of sections. I see. Why, well, if I look up here, I see number of members. So in one section, you have three people. So in the second section or the next section together, you're going to have six. So I see it's like you're just multiplying a number to get the number of members. And it seems to me that lucky number is number three. Yeah, because one times three is three, two times three is six. 3 times 3 is 9, 4 times 3 is 12, 5 times 3 is... Okay, you get the idea. Yes. So I say a 3 goes here, but that would also mean a 3 goes here. Cool. Multiply the number of members by blank to find the total area. Complete the table. That's right, because they're working in a particular area. It says that in each section, there is 15 square feet. And so two sections would be 30 square feet. So here I'm looking at a relationship of two numbers here, 3 and 15, 6 and 30, okay, 9 and 45. What am I having to multiply by? Yeah, 5. Is that what you were thinking? You are so smart. Yes, you are smarter than a fifth grader. Okay, and I'm just barely, okay. Next, it says, so the area of the dig site if 21 members are digging is blank square feet oh i see well now that we know that it's a multiply by five then i could just take my 21 right and multiply that by five because that's that relationship they were looking at and what do we get 105 
square feet. Woohoo! Yeah, yeah. Is it just me or am I just thinking we're doing like third grade math? Ah, this is really easy. I don't know. I should be careful because I know the next section is more independent. Page master. Okay, now it says try another problem. Casey is making a design with triangles and beads for a costume. In his design, each pattern unit adds three triangles and 18 beads. Casey uses 72 triangles in his design. How many beads does Casey use? Use the graphic organizer below to solve the problem. All right. First thing, though, is what do I need to find? Well, I know that was in the question. And the question stated, how many beads does Casey use? So what I need to find is basically the number of beads he uses. Cool. Now it says, what information do I need to use? Well, looking at the problem up here again. So one thing I'm going to have to say is that, yeah, I, I couldn't use the number of beads and triangles Casey uses in one pattern unit because it states in the problem in his design, each pattern unit adds three triangles and 18 beads. I'm also going to need to use that in his costume because he's using this for his costume. Casey uses 72 triangles, so I'm going to need that information as well. Okay, so there I've done some abbreviation here. I don't want to confuse you, but with the limited space, I wanted to make sure I could fit that in there. The pound sign here, as you see, just means number. So it says I can use the number, that little tic-tac-toe uh, design of beads and triangles. So I have a triangle and with a little apostrophe S. Casey uses in one pattern unit and that his costume will have 72 triangles. How will I use the information? This always comes back to our essential question. I'm going to use this information because I'm going to be searching for a pattern to solve a simpler problem. Let's do that. And there we go. Now we have solve the problem. Here, what we want to do is, like last time we actually set up a really easy table. So what I'm going to do is, so I can learn how to use that by making the problem simpler, I'm going to go ahead and create a table. Okay, I created this table. As you can see, I have the number of pattern units. That was similar to the table we made before, which was the sections of the dig. So I'm just saying the number of pattern units. And from the problem, we know when we had one pattern unit, we needed three triangles, right? And we needed 18 beads. And this is how we're making this into a simpler problem. So that would mean that if we had one more pattern unit, right, this number, right, is going to double. And that's going to be six. And of course, this number too, this number here is going to double. So we already see kind of one pattern here for the triangles. Okay. And that pattern for the triangles is going to be add three. Isn't that what it's going to keep doing? Because once we move to the third pattern unit, when we have three of those pattern units, look what happens. It's going to be nine, three, six, nine. We're doing multiples now. 1836, we need to add another 18. Uh, that's 54. So you can see what's happening here is we're actually doing add 18. So by setting up that chart, look at it, it's making our problem much, much simpler. Now I can keep going. So four pattern units, again, three, six, nine, 12. I'm just adding three. Here I'm gonna add another 18, looks like two, uh, six, seven, looks like 72, okay? Now we can keep going all the way, but just like in the other table, we just, we could do our little dot, dot, dot. And that just suggests that there's a lot of numbers that fall in between that we're not going to write all of them down, but we are going to jump to what we need to get here is we need when we need to know the number of beads Casey uses the number of beads. Okay. Not the triangles, but the beads. So we're looking at this, we need we know that his costume has 72 triangles. So what we could do is we could put our 72 triangles right here. Okay. Do we know the number of pattern units? We don't. The problem doesn't give us that. It just gives us that he's going to have 20, 72 triangles. But what we can do now here to find the number of beads he uses is we could multiply the number of triangles by six. Why would we want to do that? Well, look at the relationship with 3 and 18. See how this is time 6? And it looks like the it's following this pattern here, time 6 all the way, time 6. 
9 times 6, 54. So it seems to me then what we could do is now that we've identified this pattern by looking at the triangles and the beads, because we know that one pattern unit, when there are three triangles, there are 18 beads. So we want to say, well, so when there's 72 triangles, then there are, well, we need to take that 72, multiply it by 6. Now we have 12, carry the 1, 42, 43, 432. So Casey uses 432 beads. Now I want to make sure that we have our notes down to make sure that you understood how I did that problem. So the key thing and what the problem was asking us was the number of beads that Casey uses for a costume that's going to have 72 triangles. The table helped us make the problem simpler. So what did I do? Well, we stated this to find the number of beads he uses I can multiply the number of triangles by 6 because that's indeed what we did do since there are. Okay, so I just want to write those notes down because I think it's important that we understand the problem and how the number of triangles and beads were related. Cool. Now it does say what rule could you use to find an unknown number of beads if you know the related number of triangles. That's interesting because isn't that what we just did? It's asking us for the rule, the rule that we could use to find an unknown number of beads, which is what the problem was that we had, if you know the related number of triangles, which in this problem we knew the number of triangles was 72. So the rule is just going to multiply the number of triangles by 6 to find the number of beads. So that's the rule. So if I were to say the rule, I think I would write it just like that. Multiply by six. Okay, they gave us a lot of lines here. I guess they want you to write like really complete sentences. We could multiply the number of triangles by six to get the number of beads. There's a full sentence. But in essence, that's what the problem is asking and we've answered it. Yeah, woohoo! Can you feel it? Oh, I feel alive. Oh, but not live? Is that the end of the video? No! Uh-oh. It's the end of another math video. Mr. Wara, relax, breathe. Breathe, do your yoga. All right, my friends. Yes, it's time to say later, my jungle friends. Kid, our paths cross once again. Live long.